So hi everyone, my name is Nancy, and the story of where my whole dance journey started. Um, growing up, I've always started traditional dancing. I've done it with my cousin. I've never done anything com competitively, but um, it was something that we, I love to do. Um, so, you know, we would traditional dance in the living room, and, you know, throughout the year growing up, I would always go out always attend the Hmong New Year that happens annually. There's the one in River Center and there's the one in the Metrodome and I will attend both. Um, and I would always see dance competitions and I knew growing, growing up, I was really fascinated by it. I remember there was, you know, other teams like Motion Crew and Minnesota Sunshine and Minnesota Butterfly. And I, was t and I used to beg my dad and mom to please sign me up to dance with them because I just wanted to dance. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have that luxury of, of learning how, to, of being able to, you know, dance. Um, so yeah, that's how I ended up um, just starting out dancing with my cousins. And that progressed to going from traditional Hmong dancing to, um, you know, K-pop covers. And I was doing K-pop covers for a while during in high school with my cousins, the same cousins. Um, and we started this little group called MB. Mm -hmm. And it was just, you know, me and, and my four or five cousins and, um, you know, we were we would go back and perform at the Hmong New Year, and it wasn't competition; it was just a performance. I don't know if like anyone remembers, but like there's like the big stage and there's the small stage, and we will aim for the small stage, and <laughs> we would just perform there, um, you know, like two three times out of the day, um, and it would be the same set. But we were just so in love, infatuated with dance that you know it was worth that. Um, moving into it, moving into that. Um, after high school, I ended up leaving and I ended up going to college. And, you know, during college, there was like a lot of dark moments in my life. And, you know, I didn't really have the biggest support um, with my family. So when I went into college, I was recommended to jo um, join a, a student organization called Hip Hope. And when I, you know, it was a friend and she was like, hey, you should do it. It was just, you know, it was just something that, she just recommended me and, you know, I was really anxious and I was like, you know, maybe it's not right for me, but after taking the first workshop, I just, it was, it was like instant love. You know, when it's true love, it's true love. And I just knew that it was my fit. Um, and that's also one struggle that, that's one thing that I struggled with growing up, you know, was like, yes, I, tr I enjoy traditional dancing, but it wasn't really me. Um, I did K-pop dancing, but it wasn't really me. There was a lot of things that I did not really stand for. And on top of that too, I didn't really have a lot of support from pretty much anyone. So I didn't really have found a deeper connection with that until I joined um, the student organization and in college. And with that, I was able to find you know, the right group of friends. I was able to write, find the right group of support. And, you know, throughout this process, I did not get a lot of support from my family and they were against it. But it was, not only was there this connection, but there was this feeling that I just felt right. You know, when something just feels right, you just kind of have to trust your gut. I was telling myself like, yes, I, I may not get all my support, but if I have something, it's more than nothing. It's better than nothing. Um, so yeah, so I joined that team, that student org and I started learning and you know, I was very new, so I was learning and they were more curated towards an urban or something that was once called urban, now we call it open style, um, an open style slash hip hop choreography base. So, you know, you went to the workshop, you learned a choreography from a guest instructor and that was it. Um, and that was when I started diving more into hip hop, more into the open style, more into, you know, other styles such as, you know, whacking and house. And, you know, the more I dug into, I just fell in love and it was, everything just sat really nice, um, nicely, you know, on top of each other. And, you know, I was able to have the opportunity to learn from a lot of students and a lot of people who are in the dance community, like, you know, so, such as, you know, Ozzy, such as her, such as Joelle, Frankie, and, you know, that's where I met my husband, Sean, and, um, 
you know, it's just a few of the people who I look up to. And from there, I was able to also connect with people who are from out of states. Um, but yeah, so we went, you know, when I was with a student organization, I ended up joining another student org called uh, PSA, so the Filipino Student Association, and I joined their modern group. It was just because I just wanted to perform, and I think during that time, Frankie and Edgar, they were running it, and they were saying, hey, you should join, and I was like, yeah, okay. And, you know, we did a performance for their, um, uh, one of their events, and that was when I, you know, I brought in Sean because I was a fashion coordinator. So I was like, hey, you know, you should come and coordinate, you know, come <laughs> model for me. And then, you know, that's where, like, we kind of knew each other. And then um, from there, um, we met um, a friend, and his name was Mimo, and he was like, hey, would you be interested in ever making a team and competing in, you know, World Dance Chicago? And I was like, World Dance, of course. I have no clue what it means, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> um, and then from there, you know, I started connecting more with, you know, with them, and it was, and it was really funny because it was our group that was in that, that set. We all kind of shifted over to the comp group, and that was when everything just kind of exploded. So I was with, um, they, we ended up creating a, a, a group called um, Minnesota Motion, and I was with them for about, I believe, for about three to four years. Um, and during that time, um, after the four years, we decided to leave and we decided to start um, our own group. And that was when um, I actually we actually started and co-founded the group called Elite Family. Um, so, you know, we started the group and it was me, Sean, um, and Russ, and Annie. And it was just kind of from scratch. It was like, you know, we, we wanted to start a group and we wanted to go and compete. How can we do that? And that was pretty much how everything um, started with like where we are now. Um, and yeah, during this process, you know, there was a lot of, there was, you know, obviously a lot of issues that was going on. Like, you know, when I was dancing throughout this whole journey, I didn't really have a lot of support from my family because as you may know, a lot of Hmong parents, they don't condone this, this activity and they think it's like a bad thing, but it's really re re rewarding, you know. I was always, I remember telling my parents, like, I get to work out, you know, and mm -hmm. I get to sweat and I get to dance and I get to do what I love. Like, there's no price that you can put onto it. So, yeah, so yeah. So going from there, um, we, I started Elite Family and we've been going for six years strong. So this is our sixth um, season. And well, because of COVID, we have to end it, which is completely fine. Um, and you know, when we started with the Lee family, um, more opportunities started to come up. We started curating more opportunities. And right now I'm one of the co-director, co-founder of the Lee family. And then I am also a part of an all women's team, um, sisterhood called Gentle Bays. I'm one of the co-captains for them. And then um, on top of that, um, I'm a member of an all women's group called She. And then, you know, on top of this busy schedule that I have, I'm also like an instructor at House of Dance. So yeah, that's just a little bit of my dance journey, but you know, it all started from just taking one class and being so inspired and just craving to learn. And it started from here and I, you know, I train everywhere, you know, other than Minnesota, I train out of states and whenever I get to go to California, I take advantage of that. So my training varies from, you know, in-state with, all these dancers and then out of state and then in California. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Awesome. What's up, everybody? My name is Sean Vu. Um, where should I start? Start at the very beginning. <laughs> so, um, it was when I was in eighth grade, my point of entry to dance was break dance. That was the style. Um, I saw some, a lot of people actually dancing at my middle school, Jackson Middle School. And I was like, what are you guys doing? Can I, can I join? And they're like, the instructor came up and he was like, this is a paid class. Oh. And I was like, oh, I got no money, huh? So I was like, all right. So I kind of just walked out because, you know, I was a shy kid. I was overweight and I was just super shy and I didn't know how to, like, you know, have a conversation as much. So I just, like, went home and then that was towards the end of the year of eighth grade. So um, I, I saw that they were dancing and there, it, was, it looked pretty cool. I knew that my friends that I kind of grew up with, um, 
from elementary school to middle school, they also did breakdance. That was the, style, the name of the style. Um, and I was really interested in that. So I was trying to practice throughout the summer by myself. Um, I didn't know what it technically looked like or had anyone to reference. So actually that summer, I, I ended up breaking my collarbone. So I was doing, uh, I was trying to do a air track. <laughs> One of the hardest moves to start when you're a beginner. So somehow, like I just, I just did not do that. And I fell on my shoulder and it, and it snapped my collarbone in half. So I was wearing this back brace for like a good six months before I went to high school. So um, while I was wearing it, I was like, man, I gotta like, I gotta do something about like, I wanna like, I wanna get there, I wanna do that. So then uh, while I was kind of going to high school, um, I was with my uncle and you know, he was just kind of like, he was like my role model, his name was Peter Vu. Um, so he was showing me the ropes. He was showing me a lot about like, how to talk to girls and you gotta have that one uncle. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I, I want a girlfriend. Cause you know, he was talking to, talking to me about uh, uh, girls and stuff. So I was like, man, I wanna, I wanna learn how to break dance so I can get a girlfriend. And that was like my biggest reason why I kind of started dancing at first. Um, so then I, I kind of go and I, I, I'm walking into freshman year of high school. And then I was like, um, I actually ended up playing tennis that summer instead of break dancing. So then I was like extremely tan. Um, and that was like after coming back from my brace. So I was like, man, I want to like start break dancing, but I don't know who. I, want, I reached out to my uh, friend's brother's group, the older brothers, because we have like this weird, um, my brother and their brothers are like friends. And then their younger brothers and me were friends. And then we have a younger brother where they're all kind of friends. So it's like a generational like connection of friendship. Um, I wanted to join them, but then like, they were like, no, you have to be good at break dance. So I'm like, all right. So it never happened. Um, they turned out to be collaborations crew back, uh, back then. That was around like 2004, 2005. Um, and then I was going into middle, uh, no, 2005 to 2006. That was during the time where I was kind of going to high school. And I was like, I have no one to break dance with. So um, I went on this art trip uh, to the museum. Um, I forgot what museum it was, but I met, my, I met this one guy named John Vang. He showed me, actually, uh, he actually took me to McDonald's and showed me how to order from McDonald's for the first time. So <laughs> I was super excited about that. Um, but he, he turned out that he liked break dancing too. So we're like, hey, let's connect. So we started like this friendship with each other where we just, you know, danced together and his brother danced. And we found some more people over at Chaplin Park High School to create a break dance club over there. And... Um, and it was really like, it was like really like different how we were kind of starting that. And like, I've always wanted to get in on something, but I never really had that. I was like a sheltered child my whole life. So I was like, this is my first time doing it. And my point of entry like was through the style of break dancing, but then it's, it was also through the lens of leadership and management, like mm -hmm. right away. Like I didn't get a chance to be a student. I just kind of went straight into this, this big role. Um, so I was like, you know, since I never got the opportunity um, to have resources or to learn or to grow or to have that in my childhood, it kind of just manifested on me to kind of just hosting because no one else was doing it. Um, so throughout that, throughout my high school year, we were just doing the breakdance club, hosting things for other people, teaching people how to breakdance, even though like we weren't that great ourselves. Like we were, I was, my question was like, you know, do I teach people or does it not happen? So I just chose the latter because you know that made more sense to me. Um, and then that was like during my sophomore to junior year, I believe that was when um, the, our breakdancing club and all that stuff was picking up more. Um, and that's where like collaborations crew noticed me and they're like, hey, you want to join our crew? <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> so that worked, uh, that worked out. I, I joined them in. It was me, my friend, uh, John, actually joined too. And then his brother, Peng Veng. And then um, I met my other friend who turned out, who became my best, best friend was Tony Zhang. Um, so it was like kind of like us kind of going into the collaborations crew because um, they've been going on for a very long time. I believe before 2000. They were started, uh, I think the head honcho was Ronald Vang, 
and then the other leaders were Nep and Vang and Sunny Vang. It was a family crew. So the mm -hmm. um, majority of the brothers and sisters were kind of like leading it. Um, but we came in, and um, I think it was after they had a, like a split. It was a huge crew back in the days. Um, and then they actually split um, for collaborations to Break Brats, which ultimately became Looney Tunes, which they're still here. Yeah. Um, and then that was pretty cool to kind of like be part of that, like that umbrella, that family branch. Um, but then when we came in, that was when like things weren't like the leadership uh, was like trying to figure things out. But ultimately, it ended with us kind of joining in as a last like line, last generation of collaboration crew. Mm -hmm. um, I think everything just stopped. We we talked to them about it, but uh, we wanted to continue collaborations crew. Just me. Tony and Peng, uh, and John was going to college and he was gonna do his own thing. And then uh, we were like, hey, we want to keep pushing with collaborations crew, can we do that? But it just never worked out. So we just kind of continued with our breakdance club at Chaplin Park High School. Um, we hosted a lot of jams because we were like, hey, let's have battles. Uh, we don't have any money, but maybe like t uh, 50 bucks for a first prize or mm -hmm. 100 bucks for first place, uh, whatever money we had. So. Um, it was uh, the competition called Flow With It. And we had it for about three, four years um, where we kind of met more of the break dancers from the community. Um, Sa Cheng and his group, they all came in wearing white with mm. the black zigzag and purple. You remember that? <laughs> so I really, oh, it's like the only group that came in wearing uniforms. I'm like, whoa, that's so cool. I want a uniform too. Um, but that was like the, the really cool highlight. During those years, uh, 2007 to eight to nine, was where I kind of noticed like there was a huge boom in break dancers, especially in the Hmong community. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of young break dancers, boys and girls. Um, and that was really cool. And, and that didn't really like manifest too much in my mind until my senior year where I, I kind of realized that like in our Hmong culture, like since we came from a different country, we don't have many role models and we don't see many role models. And we're kind of in this weird social identity crisis where it's like, who are we? You know, mm -hmm. like, who am I? What, what values do we like really like work on? Um, and that's where like kind of breakdancing became a huge platform and a medium for us to kind of find ourselves. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of saw that like, I, I, again, I do believe that a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, the guys started breakdancing to get the attention of the girls. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's funny because I, I, I did get the girlfriend. <laughs> and then I was like, what's left? What's more after that? <laughs> so I, I was like in this weird, like, I got the girlfriend, I got the end goal. But now it's like, why am I still doing this? And, and it kind of like came into me to the whole idea of like social identity, mm. of like finding yourself as a person. What do you believe in? What do you stand up for? And I was just like figuring out why do I, why am I still continuing that? Because um, I was doing a lot of leading, hosting, managing, and then my friend John, when he was in college, uh, he was actually was still doing this program in Minneapolis, um, Fit Force, with the neighborhood health clinics, especially uh, with Fremont uh, Neighborhood Health uh, Clinic. Um, so then he was like, "Hey, I'm teaching this uh, program. Do you want to come and you know?" hang out with us and teach it too. So I was like, yes. So we, all the brothers, we all went there with them. It was uh, me, John, uh, Tony, and Peng. And we we're just like teaching kids from the community in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. um, free classes on break dancing. And it was just really cool. We had that and it was just like um, kind of growing up into um, kind of just providing opportunities for other people. Um, and that kind of led to the end of like my high school year kind of. Um, I wanted to continue with breakdance some more, but then it wasn't until like I was at John Vang's house and I was like, we were watching uh, America's Best Dance Crew, mm -hmm. and it was season one. It was between Jabberwockies and Kaaba Modern, and both. I don't think Jabberwock. It wasn't Jabberwock. It was uh, Kaaba Modern. They were crying about like they really want to win so bad, and um, we were watching the performances, and then they were just like dancing. I'm like, what is that? Like. It's like they're all together. I love that. Um, and it became more like uh, hip hop choreography, what they're saying. It was hip hop. But uh, media, street, media wise, it would be hip hop. But I've come to find out that there's a lot of different styles that is just crammed under the term of hip hop. Um, 
But then I was like, I really like that choreography. I want to try that. I didn't know who to reach out to. So I was just kind of like watching YouTube videos and, uh, and trying to figure out how to mimic the movements. Um, and then it kind of like took me to the next part of my life where it's like uh, being a freelance uh, dancer. Like, what am I going to do after college? Like, I have no idea. Like, what do I want to do? And all I knew how to do was to just dance. Mm. So I went on this weird journey of being a freelance dancer, uh, just taking random jobs around the cities. Um, I mean, I was doing one for, uh, I totally forgot the name. Um, it, was, it was just a gig for a commercial that was for a music video for a company. Um, and I was doing that and then just kind of like having these odd jobs because it's as a dancer trying to find gigs and have this as a career in Minnesota, it's kind of weird because <laughs> usually the idea is that you go to California, you go to somewhere else because there's more opportunities and that's true. There's opportunities here, but then you have to be kind of unique about it. Um, so I had this weird one to two year journey of like finding gigs and trying to be part of it. I was part of, I worked as a choreographer for Premier Entertainments, but then I believe they closed down the business due to financial reasons. Um, never got paid. Uh, <laughs> um, and then that was when I was just kind of like um, taking jobs. One job I took was a, a, a summer instructor for Chat Center for Hmong Arts and Talents. Um, I did, I taught uh, dance, hip hop, for their kids. And then I was also instructor for Hmong American Partnerships Program for International Hmong Academy in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of these um, random summer part-time jobs uh, teaching youths how to dance and just kind of meeting them out and just trying different things throughout the community. Um, and then I was still kind of like finding myself because like, what's, what am I going to be doing? You know, um, and it was, it was a difficult time because like as a Hmong, um, dancer, like again, Hmong, in, in our culture, dancing isn't like highly, it's looked down upon because it's like a hobby. And like, no doubt in the past, like our Hmong culture, our families would be farming, they would be making money, they'd be doing something that would benefit the family. And I was just doing this dancing thing that just doesn't do anything to them. <laughs> and um, they've always like chastised me about it and told me not to do it. But I kind of took an approach where it's like, I'm not gonna listen to you guys. I'm gonna just kind of keep doing it, and like that does sound kind of bad. And but it, it took me on this like different uh, journey to kind of like looking at dance from a different perspective. Like, how can this benefit me to make me better as a person? But then again, uh, I looked at it back again, and I realized that there's not a lot of role models and leaders. And I was kind of out on my own, kind of making my own path and deciding for myself what's important. Um, and that's where um, I kind of met Nancy because I was like, hey, I got a gig. It's down in Mankato. I need, I, need a, I need a girl to stand there for me for three minutes, $100. Can you do it for me? And she was like, I'll get back to you. And then she said, no. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> I was confused, but I was like, I, I guess now like, I, I get it. Like, it's kind of weird for someone to just message you. I, I joined a bunch of dance groups on Facebook to find dancers to connect with. Um, so then, um, that's how we kind of connected for a little bit. And then she reached out to me later on saying, Hey, I need a model. You want to show up? I'm like, sure, I'll show up. Cause I was in the zone where it's like, I got to connect. I got to find people, whatever it takes. And I show up and I feel like I was the only one that actually showed up yeah. to <laughs> that opportunity. And I met more people. I, I met hip hope, a, a student organization at the U of M. And I joined them and at, we took weekly classes and it was really good. Um, but then like, I kind of like, um, I was working more on dance, more so myself. So then I had this weird like disconnection of my life where it's like, it wasn't properly balanced. Um, but then I kind of continued with the dance with Nancy. Um, everyone else was like, all my, my parents were like, don't, don't dance, you need to focus on this and this. I'm like, you're right. I'm not going to do that. And, <laughs> and, you know, I was trying to find out why, like, why am I kind of going in this different route? And um, ultimately, like, we, I joined Minnesota Motion. That was part of the thing. And they kind of brought me, immersed me into this whole world of dance choreography, um, hip hop, different styles. And it was, uh, we went to Ward of Dance Chicago, blew my mind. I saw all these dancers who had the resources and had all the people that were supporting them. And just watching them perform, like, 
why, why am I not doing that? And then I was just like feeling some type of way about it because I was like, man, like I love this. Like, where can I get more of this? And it came back when I came back to Minnesota from Chicago. I was like, you know, like we don't have that here, and no one's going to be providing that, you know. And it came back to me. It was like, I, I'm back in this position of having to host, having to be a leader, having to manage, having to provide. And and a lot of the times, I feel like in dance was the reason why I did it was because one, I was trying to find out who I was, and then two. Um, it was because I wanted to provide the resources that I never had to other people. Mm -hmm. And that kind of became like that kind of lifestyle kind of ideas that um, it kind of grew into that role. And Minnesota Motions had their ups and downs and um, it, was, it got to the point where we just didn't quite agree with the direction of the leadership. So then I was like, Nancy, we gotta quit. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta leave out of this. It's, it's not gonna work out. And she was like, I don't want to. And then like, we have to do it. So we did it. Um, she was really mad and sad, and she cried. And I was like, but it was, you know, it was the best decision that we made. It was because it took us on a different d journey. Um, um, and then that's when we started Elite Family Dance with Annie Moore and Rassas and Lai. Um, we're all co-founders, um, and it's given us years. We started in 2015. Um, and again, uh, we're back in the same position of like providing opportunities, trying to go. But then like my reason was like, I just want to go there and like kill it and like mm -hmm. just destroy the competition. But then it kind of brought this, all these responsibilities, like um, all the little things that kind of helped me kind of grow into, that, um, into this role now. Um, and it's been about six seasons, six mm -hmm. years. And during that time, those six years, I've kind of, I've became a coach for a dance group called Zephonics. Um, for about a year at Asian Media Access. Um, it's a nonprofit in Minneapolis. And um, from there on, I became, I started a different dance group, which was a GXG dance, which was gentlemen's and gentle bays, because like, I just enjoyed the whole idea of like hosting and providing and then like doing my own projects and all of that stuff. I was really interested in that. Um, and now like I was really into the whole idea of like finding out why I was dancing, why I was doing all these things. And it was just kind of like for me to really highlight and showcase the best moments of everything, which kind of brought me to videography, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of videography work uh, with dance as my focus. Because I was like, we're, there's a lot of things about dance that people don't see so that, that I want to bring out mm -hmm. with the videography lens. Mm -hmm. So I've been kind of doing that as well and trying to highlight those things. And I think that um, dance has really shaped me in terms of what I want to become, what I want to provide, who I am, finding my place in this world. And that's something that like, I, I, I definitely understand. Like A lot of people, especially in my own culture, we struggle with because it's like, who are we? And, and that's the hardest part to kind of understand. Um, and now, I, now more than ever now, there's a lot of resources. We have this library. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of things in St. Paul. Things are happening. We're starting to have, uh, I guess, my generation where it's like, we know that we're lacking role models and everyone's kind of like growing into their own specific unique roles. Mm -hmm. Now we're becoming role models for the next generation, um, which is really cool. And I, and I can see this full circle effect. Like no doubt we were the first to kind of like, not really the first, but then more so like the first to head first into all this like unsure uncertainty. But now that we can kind of become that light for other people to go mm -hmm. on. So um, with that, like I, I not, I'm not really sure like how things kind of came together, but kind of committing to something and then just trying to learn about it and understand more has really changed my perspective and uh, allowed me to become who I am today, to be even a part of this, to, to meet everyone. Um, and it's just like the, the whole idea of like, I guess social identity is that like how will you kind of find yourself, where you want to go and how, how does it fit into like the world, and I think that's that's where I'm at now. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I'm Elvina. Um, I guess I my interest for dance kind of came up um, more so in middle school. Um, dancing wasn't really music too. Actually, wasn't really like a big thing in like my family, like some occasionally we'll have music, but then it was very select. Um, one, because my family, they farm, so they were busy. Um, 
So it wasn't until I kind of hung out with my cousins and them more, and we started watching movies, we started watching music videos. So that's kind of where my interest started. Um, but it was always just like an interest. I didn't really like dive into it as much, and not until high school um, where I attended, well, I went to high school in Egan, so they had a dance class that I was able to take. And I didn't take the class until I would say my junior year. So that's when I met um, like Jennifer Glaz, um, who was the new dance teacher. And she kind of just um, took us to events or uh, organizations to kind of show us different forms of dance. So I was introduced to like contemporary, I was introduced to um, a little bit African dancing, not really. I think I got more of that when I uh, attended the festival that she showed us, where she, the festival, they bring in different artists, artists in the dance community to kind of uh, run choreography with us or like to have yeah, just small little workshops, introducing different kinds of dances. Um, and I actually met Maya Maiden through that, which is interesting because of how um, we are today in like the community, which I think it's cool to kind of see that. And then um, I also met Tracy there. She was teaching a locking class. I didn't know it was locking then. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, this is cool. But yeah, it was, so these events that I went to, it was just really cool, just like looking at different styles, just. Um, being introduced to like these different dancers. And then uh, we also had, so all my friends danced. So I hung around with the dancers. Um, and then it wasn't until probably junior year again, where I was brought out to um, the jams. So like there were sessions and there was like battles that I would go to and they were all breaking events. Um, just because, yeah, the breaking then was like a pretty uh, popular thing to go into. Yeah. So like many, I kind of got into breaking. <laughs> um, so, it, and it didn't last as long either. Cause like I didn't, ha it wasn't, it was fun, but it wasn't something that I was like, eh, I'll just like, I'll just watch my friends and support them in the battle. So that's what I did. Um, and then it wasn't until Adam, uh, he took us, to Central Mission, which then introduced us to the popping sessions. And I would just sit there for like the whole year, like a whole year's worth just sitting and watching. And like, I didn't know what it was. So I felt more comfortable watching it and like saying, okay, this is how, cause they would, how sessions work is that we just hold ciphers. Um, sometimes we run, they would run drills. Um, so I would just watch how everything was curated, how sessions ran. And then it wasn't until Tracy, one year Tracy just was like, she came, she was taking a set and she just came right up to me and she like looked at me and then she, <laughs> and she told me to take a set. So I did take a set with no knowledge of <laughs> popping or just dance in general because I didn't specify in like a dance or a style then. So that was like the first time I freestyled and it felt, it was scary at first, but it felt nice. So th she allowed me to kind of open up a little bit. Um, and then later on, they started running styles drills. Um, and then that's when I would, she would just come in and be like, okay, let's run like Scarecrow. So she would explain like in Scarecrow, the main idea, like the technique behind it, the foundation of it, and then we'll just one by one, take a set. Um, and I did that for a good year. And then, whew, uh, after that, we, she actually wanted to, cause Tracy has always battled or went out of state, battled on her own. Um, and so she, one day she was like, oh, we should all go battle together as like a community or as, cause the poppers, there's a very few select of us. So she was like, okay, let's just all go to Chicago and let's go, battle. Um, and so we went to, actually my first battle that I went with them was in Indiana, <laughs> um, Journey to the Cypher. So that was my first battle, very scary, but it was really fun. Um, and that was the first time I've seen 
a different community, like a different scene, a different how they kind of the energy of the community there. So that was really fun to watch. Um, I did not place clearly because I have not been dancing, but it was really cool seeing because the it was really cool seeing the battles and watching Adam and Tracy because they were at semifinals together. So that was really fun watching friends just battle each other, how they kind of battle. It was really goofy, but it was really fun to watch. Um, and then as we continue battle, going to different battles, we were like, oh, we all click. It's really cool. Like everyone's cool to hang out with. We all have the same interests and in that we want to work on popping. We want to grow as like a community. And then we're like, oh, let's just form a crew. So all those that traveled with us were like, hey, what should we, <laughs> what should we be named? Um, and it's actually, it actually came from an inside <laughs> joke. <laughs> um, so one of the battles, from what I know at least, Tracy was battling this OG um, in Michigan. <laughs> and he was, it was a funny battle because he was kind of disrespectful. <laughs> but, and then so it made Tracy like super angry. So she went in, took him out, and then God sent, <laughs> he got up and he was like, all day. And then that's when they're like, okay, let's just call us up all day because of how Tracy destroyed <laughs> that man in the battle. So um, that's how our name started. So it's kind of like a, more of like an inside joke and in that um, we kind of just, I don't know, we're all killing it all day, working all day, drilling all that <laughs> stuff all day. Um, so that's how we kind of started. Then we started traveling more so as all day. Um, and we kind of traveled more in the Midwest, so Chicago, Michigan. I didn't go too much in Wisconsin, but I know some of the crew members did. Um, although we never, some of us may not have placed, it was still really cool to like just travel as a crew. Um, that way we're kind of connecting more and we're also trying to figure out what we want to drill, what we want to work on. Um, and looking again, looking at different scenes and taking workshops there too. Cause like meeting their like OGs or like seeing the people that started their community. That was also pretty cool to watch. Um, and so then after battles, we kind of inch, uh, fell into performances uh, through the community. So like Maya Maiden mm -hmm. um, knew Tracy really well. So she would ask um, if she would have like a group. Before we were all day, we performed at Rooted as Minnesota Funk Styles. Um, and so that was my kind of first uh, performance to popping in, or performing with popping. Um, and then later on, we just slowly got more gigs. So we, have, we did two more years of Maya Maiden's Rooted. Uh, we got, um, also we got an opportunity to perform with at uh, Drop the Mic, which was really cool to do too. Uh, we also wanted to, so Tracy wanted to throw her own performance uh, and she got that through the Minnesota Fringe Festival. Um, so through the Minnesota Fringe Festival, that's when we <laughs> made our own production. Lots of work. <laughs> <laughs> to who people do that as a living, <laughs> uh, you guys are freaking dope because that was hard. Um, so just figuring out choreography um, and stringing things together and like fighting the committed dancers. So the whole thing with, um, Minnesota Fringe, we called our production Funkin' Good Time. Um, and we presented uh, like popping, so the funk style, so popping, locking, and whacking. And we, had to, we wanted to incorporate breaking. So we had Jay, Annie Up, and Mona Lisa be in it too. So that was really fun, just working with um, a different style and trying to showcase that. Um, which I think the idea first came from Jason and Dance and Dave, which that, those two, when they did their performances was super dope too. Cause I was like super, backtrack, Dance and Dave. <laughs> <laughs>
awesome dancer. He is probably one of our biggest inspiration for all day to like push. Um, he's an amazing mover and he purely like, you can tell like he's, he dances purely because he enjoys it, he loves it. Um, and he's a great teacher too. So unfortunately we don't see him as much anymore. But yeah, so he was kind of an inspiration of like of how we um, battled as a crew, how we sessioned as a, or how we worked as a crew um, going forward. Uh, Funkin' Good Time. So after Funkin' Good Time, um, we kind of wanted to work more on productions. So that was kind of the goal, uh, which we fulfilled, and it was really fun to do. Um, throughout the years, so we had such a mission was our big session spot. Um, and I forgot what year it closed. Um, so we, because it closed, we were like, oh shoot, where are we going to session now? Um, so we, we were jumping from spaces to spaces. Sometimes you would session at side for side, um, which is a really dope spot. Um, but then we thought, we're like, uh, let's try to open up our own space. Um, so that's when we started All Day Studio. Initially, that was just for like, oh, we want a session spot or we want a spot for like the poppers to just come in and just dance um, for our Wednesday sessions. So that's how we started All Day Studio, um, which was it's an adventure on its own. So starting a business for me was interesting, especially with um, some, a hobby that I wanted to keep as a hobby. Um, I never really viewed dance as something as like a career, because for me, I know I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not willing to hustle. <laughs> I'm not willing to like, oh, am I gonna get a paycheck? Like my, that's just too much stress for my own brain. So I always knew it was gonna hobby. So starting a business with dance was, I had to like switch gears in my mind and it was, it was a struggle, but we did it. So um, All Day Studio probably taught me a lot with um, keeping things business and then keeping, because at one point I kind of struggled with dance. So like, I'm like, oh, I have so many business things to do. I can't, like, I'm not focusing on my dancing. Mm. Um, so that actually helped me find time for me to drill, find time for me to enjoy the dance again um, and then there so all day studio I'm glad we are still pushing for it because our main goal for that is to kind of bring in um, artists and kind of share the culture mm -hmm. of like the street dances so like introducing like whacking like what is whacking we don't have a whacking scene as far as uh, as I know um, so sharing that knowledge to the community and like and getting an understanding of history and foundation so connecting with um so me finding that time to work on my own dance i would go on zoom um and do zoom workshops so that's how i brought i'm bringing the that's how we're bringing the two uh whackers here so um getting being able to meet different um dancers from different places and then bringing them here to kind of share mm -hmm. their knowledge and their experience with the dance. Um, I think it's kind of cool and kind of falls back to that whole leadership that you're talking about, how like, oh, that's right. There's a generation behind me now. So I have to kind of like put myself in the mindset of, okay, now I have to go search for knowledge because I'm like, there isn't going to be anyone else doing it. So um, that is also a struggle with them too. So like, I'm trying to like be, okay, who, how am I gonna do this so that it's not so much pressure on me mm -hmm. and like my dance mm. as well. Um, so then I'm kind of doing it both. So I'm taking classes, but then I'm also be like, okay, is, can I bring this person in? Like, do I think this, per would this person be super dope to share to the community and stuff? So 
that leadership role. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm like a leader. Like I, that's not the first thing that I would um, call myself. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like grew into that, I guess, still working on it, mm -hmm. but it's an interesting, interesting journey, but yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Cool. Um, my name is Cheng Zhang. Um, I guess you, my story of how I got into dance is, you know, in a way, it's similar to Sean's, you know, reason as well. Um, you know, my uncles and them and cousins were doing dance a lot, and it was really cool. And they will do it at parties or uh, family gatherings in uh, Mang New Year, and I'll be there as a young child, and they'll. And they actually, uh, living with them for a while, they, uh, they were doing, it looked, it looked really cool. And so I was like, I want to look cool. And eventually, <laughs> looking cool gets you girls. And so I want to look cool and get girls and stay fit. And so it was multiple reasons to it. And um, it definitely, uh, where it really started was in elementary school. I started about third grade, fourth grade uh, at Ames Elementary with my uh, teacher, Mr. Thor, which is a, uh, now, what he says when I turn 18, now that I'm 18 plus, um, don't call him Mr. Thor no more. He's not a teacher anymore, he's a friend. And so he's, uh, I call him Vu now, Vu Thor. But um, yeah, he stayed out of school for the uh, ESL kids, held a program, opened the gym, opened the space, the stage for us to practice. Mm. And kids who wants to dance can dance, kids who wants to play could play. Uh, that was really uh, extremely, extremely helpful. And then in a way it's like, um, hearing your stories makes me think like, oh yeah, I mean, that's kind of how the shoe I was thrown into as well, you know, it's like I, I had the space available for me to practice and learn dance, but at the same time, people were doing it for fun, but for some reason I felt really driven by this movement, and mm -hmm. so I started taking leadership choices and saying, we got to practice, we got to do this, we want to we we wanna do something, and so... Um, I is slowly becoming become more of a leader throughout my, my uh, after school program. I don't think it's even a program. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, that quickly led to uh, middle school, where um, I performed my first time with a few friends because I was I was a break dancer and I also did a lot of popping. But it wasn't like it wasn't knowledge popping. It was just like watching videos and <laughs> move your muscles and move like a robot kind of popping style long time ago, in like 2000, and 2000 actually. And so it's, it, the, every, the distinguishment of words and choices is a little different than now. Um, but that's where uh, I performed first time in seventh grade with uh, the eighth graders. And then they're like, yeah, you're dope, man. I was like, oh, cool. But then they left eighth grade, and now I'm in eighth grade. And so um, that's where I met uh, one of my uh, good friends, Sachua, my best friend, Sachua, and that's where we battled together for the first time in the school dance, and then we decided, hey, you're dope. I'm dope. Let's start a crew. And so uh, we started a crew. Um, it, it was just us two first, and then uh, and a few friends that were close to us that also danced a little bit too. And dancing at that time was already like slowly spiking up, going up, and higher and higher more people were joining in, people were starting. And so that's when we decided, let's, I don't know, let's name something else, something different. What are we doing? We're, okay, motion crew, that's cool. So that's when we started Motion Crew in 2004. And so uh, we did a, f a couple of performances and our first major performance that um, really hit us, uh, the five of us, was it? Me, Sichua, uh, Philip, uh... Yes, Dance of the Block. I think, oh my gosh, I can't remember anymore now. <laughs> yes, the five of us. And, um, and we, did a, we won first place at the, at, the, at the talent show, and then the video is still on YouTube, and I, I love watching the video so much because it's like we're so young and just so driven and just so passionate and expressing ourselves. And um, that was the eye-opener for us. We're like, we, guys, if we could do this one thing here, we could do it so much more. And then, so we all agreed upon doing more of our, our, of our, our passion and what we love. And so we decided to go to high school together. Um, and 
in high school, that's where uh, some of us then added more crew members, where we met in middle school as well through the battles. And so something ha that was very exciting happened in middle school was uh, Washington versus Murray. And it was this big thing happened throughout the whole year. Um, it was a lot of breakdance battles. We will go to the Phelan stage and battle like constantly. Um, people, we are, we, we, people were biking there just to battle. Um, that's where we met uh, a few other guys, uh, Ty, and, and Ty and Johnny and Richard, and then that's where we went to high school together, and, and we did stick, stuck together and started performing, trying to perform, continue to perform, and then, uh, and then Johnson was definitely like the most, one of the most intense, longest, but also best memories ever, and uh, Johnson was. We were very fortunate to have a very supportive principal, and so Miss Arndt, amazing person in the world, she uh, supported us and then gave, gave any extra funds that was left from the school. Mm. She'd give a few of it to us so we can have new music, updated music, sound system, um, gear, protective gear, head spins, caps, and just all these kind of amazing things that we didn't know we can have access to and we didn't know was even available. And so um, that was also amazing to have and unforgettable. And then also Dr. Smith, well, his name goes by Matt Smith. He was one of the chaperones there, one of the teachers there. He does the computer tech. And he actually is a breaker as well. And um, he held a space for us after school every time through his volunteer time. Mm. And then that's where we Johnson became the open spot for the whole community. Where people, the, our field house was open. And so we'll have the hard floor for people to come and do stuff in, in the hard floor. And we'll have the gymnastics where people come in and just throw their body away and not hurt themselves as much. <laughs> and so um, for all four years of that, Johnson became that. And we are, Motion Crew is just so happy to see the community mm. like being there with us and growing with us. Um, but along with the four years, Motion Crew we also developed more performances and that's where we decided you know let's go for Hmong New Year and let's compete for Hmong New Year and that's where we first time competed at Hmong New Year in 2005. Mm. 2006. <laughs> uh, too much. Um, it was a new year. It was a new year exactly <laughs> but uh, that's where we performed for the first time. We didn't win first place but we we're like that's okay. We did get second place and, and that is all that matters. We, had, we The first place winners was Collaborations Crew and that year we we're like we gotta just <laughs> take them down just to, to see where we are capable of. And because the dream is, you know, not only being the best dancer in the world, but or best performer or best crew, but also just letting yourself know that you could become anything you want to be, mm. right? And so it's like, because there's someone better, that is the drive to you become even better. Not be better than them, but just to be better. And that's one of the drives and goal that we felt. And so we, the next year we came back for the bang and then Ever since then, we've been like feeling motivated and just continue performing as Motion Crew. Um, we did Mo uh, Malia River Center and the Metrodome. Those are the two biggest ones. Metrodome was obviously the most hardest one to compete in dance because they didn't have two sections. They had one section. Mm -hmm. And so all the dances, the traditional and modern dance, will all compete. And Minnesota Sunshine was just pure amazing. And to top them was you, they either they were somebody was off or you were everyone was on point from your side. It was it was like neck and neck, hand in hand, so close. Um, but it was amazing. Um, but those years passed by, and you know, college came. Um, well, actually, oh, I'm not I'm not going to college yet. <laughs> Through high school, Central Mission, yeah. that was the spot, and and then luckily Central Mission was uh, also a community spot where it's like. If you, if you want to come, you can come. And that's where I met Poppers then. And then eventually that's where I met Melvina as well. And it's like such a cool spot to even have in the community. Because you know, Johnson didn't, wasn't available for that, but it's awesome that Central Mission is available for that. Mm. Um, but yes, and so Central Mission, it still kept going even through college. But as I got into college, I was like, you know, what do I want to do in life? I don't know, I don't, all I've done is dance. I will, eat, sleep, dance, uh, listening music, dance. Um, I'll talk about dance, I'll watch dance. Like, what else can I do? I mean, sure, I'm good at these things, but I don't, I don't see myself having a passion like how I have for dance. Mm. And so I decided, you know, 
I can't just waste four years of college doing nothing. And so I decided, all right, I guess U of M has a dance program, and I'll just audition for the dance program. And that was a crazy night, uh, day, actually. It was, it was the snow, biggest snowstorm. It almost felt like it was fate. <laughs> like the biggest snowstorm. I was driving a 1993 Honda Civic that was dropped to the floor. <laughs> so like snow, no way. And, but the snow was like, like, it was like the big hit in 2000 and... 11, 2010, 2011, that was the big snowstorm in January. And then so I auditioned, and um, luckily my friend uh, who went to audition with me that day and went to college with me again, Philip, we went to college together, we went to a dance program together, auditioned together. Luckily his dad had a truck, and so his dad took us that day. And um, usually auditions are held you know, a five, five, five hour, six hour audition process, and you get uh, every two hours or so, you'll get a call back to come back to the next two hours, and you come back again for the last hour to show your solo. And that's how the dance program works. I, I, don't, I think it still works like that. Um, but luckily that day, they said, because of the, the crazy snowstorm, the school, U of M, is gonna shut down. I'm like, what? That doesn't happen. So this, the U of M shut down, and they had a, the door, everybody needed to be evacuated and leaving the, 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 the area by, I believe, three. And so they're like, well, let's just, if you're, if you're auditioning for the program, then you're gonna stay with us to the very end and so, show us your solo. I was like, what? Yes. <laughs> and so I, had, I was like fortunate to show my solo that day and then that, um, that opened everyone else's eyes and was like, I've never done ballet, I've never done modern, I've never done jazz, I've never even seen it, I don't even know what it looks like and I dive into doing this and so, um, I got a call. I, I got a call back and said that I, I made it through. So uh, that's when I went to the school. That's why I declared my major as a dance program in the dance program. Um, so throughout the dance, the U of M, yeah, you know, within the dance program and, and with, out of the dance program in the community, it's just so so much things that happened. And it's like if, if I also name everything that was just amazing that was just brought to this world, it will take another hour to finish. And so it's like these amazing things, but you know, that's where I met Carl. Uh, that's where he asked me to, uh, uh, to do my first dance performance with Black Label Movement in 2013. And that was my first professional performance in the performing arts theater stage. And it was eye-opening as well. Mm. Um, but uh, that's also where I met Daria Strong, and that's where we, you know, I'll take, I'll take the brother home and <laughs> we're gonna talk about dance and we'll talk about, you know, we're the only ma uh, male dancers that do true hip hop and do hip hop and grew up with hip hop. Mm. And what can we do with this in, in this dance performing arts world that um, people don't really know about and people don't focus on. And so uh, whatever vision he had, he, was, he, had, he definitely had a goal, end goal already. And, you know, I'm still just finding my way um, finding what I can do with myself. And so I tell them, whatever you do, I'm supporting you and I'm here for you. And, and surely two years later, three years later, I was part of a strong movement in 2014. When Darius uh, uh, sparked it out. Um, but then uh, with those performing uh, opportunities and being the community and still dancing and still breaking and still practicing, I was um, asked by Mona Lisa to be part of Breakfast, and then, which is back then we were known as Inu Company, but now we changed to Breakfast Dance Company. Uh, but that's where I met Mona Lisa, and I said, yes, of course, totally. This is amazing. This is what I want to do. I want to focus on breaking as well, and not just hip hop, and not just modern, and not yeah. just ballet or jazz. And so um, these movements just continue integrating in my body, and then I just, I, I love everything that's happening to me and all the people I'm meeting, and it's just amazing. Um, but you know, after college, it's like, well, what do you want to do in life? And now you're done with college, you can't just keep performing and being, you know, this dancer. I mean, you can just be this dancer, but can you make a living out of it? Probably not. Um, probably in a different way. And so, you know, I, you know, sticking with you know full-time jobs, but also still performing with three three other dance companies is mm -hmm. definitely a busy life. Mm. Um, but everybody I've met, you know, it's just always been so inspiring and motivating to just 
see what their thoughts are and how that can drive you to drive yourself to drive others as well. Um, but there's just so much more to explain and so much more stories. And that, that, in a way, that's where these things are in my body now and these people that I meet and these thoughts I hear from them. It's, now it's like, I kind of want to make, make something out of myself as well. And uh, I guess, you know, being Hmong, it's like, what, what can I do that can stand out and what can I be to stand out and just by a little bit, you know? And so um, I thought that, you know, maybe I should, I've always, during college, I was like, this might work. Maybe okay. not, whatever, we'll see. Mm -hmm. and so, but now it's like, I think this is gonna work. Whatever it is, it's gonna make it work. And so I've been, I've been seeing my body, uh, the, the creative thoughts in my body have changed and, mm -hmm. and is developing and growing. It's like, I wanna become a, di a different mover. I wanna be something else as well. And so I, uh, I'm trying to develop this new movement and then it's like, mm -hmm. what can I do with this new movement that it's in my body? Um, and so, you know, finding modern dance training and my breaking training and just finding a way to like integrate them somehow so where it's like, it's not really have happened. People have done, you know, contemporary work and modern and the breaking or contemporary and modern, but modern and breaking and finding some aesthetic out of that. And throughout the journey, this is like, I think this might be it, you know, mm. I've met these people to being something and then I'm, these things happen for a reason, and so I think I, th I could be doing something here and mm. dancing, being Hmong, you know? <laughs> it means something now, right? Yeah. So that's my story, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, hi, my name is Mai, and um, I guess, where should I start with my dance story? Um, I guess my dance story kind of happens in like different chunks in my life, and I guess to tell my dance story, I, I gotta give a little background on who I am. So I was born in a small refugee camp in Thailand. And so when we moved to the United States, we were first in California. And like with every Hmong family, we always watch like those Hmong music videos where there would be like girls dancing and like girls doing Hmong dance. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I wanna be like that too. Cause I wanna be like on the TV and like be pretty like that. And so um, I think it was in middle school, like fifth grade I met some friends and they're also really into like Hmong dance and so we wanted to like start a little group and like dance and perform for the Hmong New Year not for like the big stage competition but just like the small stage to like be there and actually my parents are like really against it because I guess like everyone like everybody has mentioned like you know, parents are against dancing, especially for girls. And, you know, there's a lot of like shaming happening, like, oh, you're gonna be Palaya, you know? They would say stuff like that. But like, I still like did it anyways. Like, I remember like me in like fifth grade, like waking up at 5 a.m. to like go to my friend's house so that we can like practice Hmong dancing. And so we ended up um, being able to perform for the new year in Fresno. And then, but after that, I like ultimately I had to stop because, you know, my parents were like so against it. And then after a while, we moved here to Minnesota and like I never really um, went back to dancing because I was just like, oh, my parents are against that. But I always watched people dance and I was always like inspired by that. And then I think when I finally like got back into it was in high school, I actually also went to Johnson down the street and like the, the break, um, the b-boy, the break dancing scene was really strong there. And I was really interested in that, but like, I guess as a girl, I felt really discouraged because I didn't really see like a lot of other girls doing break dancing, but I was always like watched from the side. And of course, like the K-pop scene was also really strong there as well. But again, like I had no courage. So I was just like watch people from the side and, um, once again, like somebody wanted to start a Hmong dance group at Johnson. And so I joined that for one week and then I had to drop out just cause like there's so many um, schedule conflicts. And of course, like the whole thing with my parents not wanting me to do that. And so I've always wanted to do dance, but I just had to like watch and admire from a distance. Cause I didn't have the courage to like push myself and like go against my parents' words until finally college came. And I guess that distance from that college gave me from my parents allowed me to kind of finally step out and go into the dance realm. 
And so um, my first year of college, um, I signed up for a dance class called Dance Composition, uh, which was taught by Win Freaky. And this dance class wasn't really focused on technique or like any specific dance style, but rather it was more focused on choreography as a whole and like how to create a um, impactful story through choreography. So we were learning how to like piece different parts of a choreography together to make it like more unified and to really um, bring out their stories and the emotion. And so in doing that, um, I guess I felt really isolated in that class because um, I guess the dancing at the college that I'm going to at McAllister is predominantly white. And so being there, being like one Hong student out of seven Hong students at this school, I was really isolated and I felt really detached from my culture. And so whenever I was in that class, I guess that was like a time and space for me to really um, express like that loneliness that I felt. And so that class gave me the space to do, to do that. And in that class, again, like I said, it wasn't focused on a specific technique, but I guess we, we did gravitate more towards modern and contemporary. So I didn't really learn how to dance, but instead I was learning, I was teaching myself how to dance in that class by learning how to build choreography, if that makes any sense. And so, yeah, and then the class, Wynn took us to um, the Cole Center to watch a show called Solo. And to me, that was really weird, like, cause I'm still like, I was still new to the dancing, especially to like contemporary dance. And so I was watching like these individuals dancing on the stage. I was like, I don't understand what you're doing. Like, I don't understand how there's a story to that. But like, I still like push myself to stay in this class because I was like, this is the only way I'm only, this is the only way I'm um, able to like experience dance. And so I stick to that class. And then later that semester, um, the school that I was at, the school that I'm still at now, um, has a um, annual dance concert where it's studi student choreographers. And I went with my class and um, I was really moved like that, that night um, I watched a, Vietnamese dancer named Tuan, and he made a piece called In Its Place that like, I honestly don't know what he uh, intended for it to say, but like when I was, when I was watching that dance, I saw a lot of like, uh, I saw that it was like strongly rooted in like cultural beliefs. And so I was like, I want to do that with like Hmong culture. Like I want to put like my culture on the stage and like let people see like the beauty in it. And so, um, and also like during that night, I also, there was another piece that I forgot its name, but like in that piece, it was like all female dancers. And I saw Asian dancers for the first time, like after a long time of being in like a white space, I was like, oh, there are Asian dancers here as well. And that really moved me because I was like, maybe I can like be like them one day. And so I pushed through with this class and um, by the next semester, uh, there was an audition for the next dance concert. And so I went and I actually, the, um, the auditions were two days. Um, I went on the very first day, but I went there and I just kind of chickened out and I just like sat there and like watched people. And I was like about to cry because I was like so nervous. I was like, I can't do this at all. But then I went back the next day because I was like, I need to like stop um, being a coward. And so I went the second day and I auditioned for only one piece. It was um, by a student choreographer named Midori, who uh, her dance piece was more Japanese folk and contemporary mixed together. And it was really intimidating because the, the studio space was about like as big as this room. And there were enough um, people there to like fill up the entire place. So I was like, how am I gonna be chosen out of everybody? But I was like, I'm gonna do this anyways because if this works out, then like this is meant to be. Mm. And so I auditioned and and um, I guess that was on a Saturday, that was on a Sunday. And then Monday evening, I was like, they're still not sending out anything. So I don't think I got in. But then like right at the last moment, I checked my email once again and I saw that like I made it into the piece that I auditioned for. And so it went from there and I was still really like, nervous, I guess, because like, again, I was really new to dance and I didn't have any technique training. I just had like, like this, I studied dance and I knew what it was, but I've never moved before. And so 
this was really new for me, but like all the girls, in, it was like a all girl cast and like everybody was just so supportive. And I was like, this is the community that like I've been yearning for, for so long. Like after being, after feeling so isolated at this school, like I finally found like a place of community. And so, yeah, that performance happened and it went really great. And like, I enjoyed every moment of it. And then, um, so flash forward to the next semester, my sophomore year, um, once again, cause like these dance concerts happen every um, semester. And so for the fall dance concert, I was like, okay, I want to audition again and keep trying and keep learning. But I had work on the day of the audition. So I missed the auditions. And so I talked to, um, um, Claudia, who's in charge of like the theater and dance um, department there, and I proposed to do a solo dance because I was like, I either um, create my own dance or I'm not in the dance concert at all. And so I was willing to like take that leap and do it because I didn't want to like continue straying away from the dance um, scene. And so um, actually, before that, over the summer, I really wanted to dance, but I didn't have a space and like. I didn't really want to like go out to studios because I was, I'm scared, you know, I'm like new to this. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't dance in front of people. And actually, I actually came here in the basement because um, the Eastside Freedom Library is run by Beth and Peter. And Beth was actually one of my professors at McAllister. And so she was like, yeah, we have a basement space if you want to dance. And so I came here and like I did some dancing. Like I watched a lot of like, um, I watched a lot of Hmong dancing, but like Hmong Chinese dancing and a lot of like classical Chinese dancing. And like, I felt like that dance style like really fit in my body. And so I wasn't able to like learn it professionally, but like I watched videos and like self-taught myself here in the basement. Mm -hmm. And so for the fall dance concert, I was like, okay, for my solo, I want to do something similar to that. And I was thinking more and more and I was like, what have I always been wanting to do? And for me, I've always wanted to like, um, show my cultural pride, especially because like I'm in a um, predominantly white space. I wanted to do something to like make myself stand out. And so I was like, okay, I want this dance piece to be rooted in my Hmong culture. I want to like put that out there for everybody to see. And so I did a solo piece on um, Hupli, like so soul calling and like kind of like creating it's my own story about the shaman who enters into like the spirit realm and like has to like fight all these different spirits and like see if she can make it out but translate that story into like a dance and that was a very um I think it was a great growing experience and learning experience for me because I was kind of really isolated because I was still doing stuff on my own but for the first time like in, like people were reaching out to me to like talk about oh what are you doing like how can I help you and stuff like that and so it was really great and um one of the dance instructors at McAllister um her name is sister her name is Pat Patricia Brown but everybody calls her sis or sister Patricia and we had like a lot of really great night conversations because I would like do my rehearsals like from like 9 to like 11 p.m. since I had classes and work throughout the day and um, sis would always be there and we would always talk and like I would tell her like about how like I was nervous and like I felt like I couldn't do this and like I felt like I shouldn't be doing this just because like I felt like with my lack of experience I shouldn't be on the stage but like the conversations that I had with sis which is so eye-opening like we would talk about how like dance isn't meant to be like this hierarchy hierarchy type of thing like it's meant to just it's meant for you to like um tell your story and like express yourself and like I think my conversation my late night conversations with her like really set it in my mind that like it's okay that like I don't have like that many years of like experience and it's okay to like not be the greatest dancer as long as like what I'm putting on stage is meaningful to myself. And so that pushed me to like continue going forward. And you know, the, um, the performance happened and like I got some, like after the um, performance, like individuals in the, in the crowd, like strangers would like come up to me and be like, that was really beautiful. And like I, and like other um, students of color at the school would, be, would come up to me and be like, that was really great. Like I wish I could do something like that with like something from my culture and like that, like the set, the fact that like I was inspiring them like really um, pushed me to once again continue with dancing. And so right now I'm at my third year at the college and I'm finally taking techniques classes. So I'm taking modern with Darius Strong and I was actually asked to um, be an, an assistant choreographer once again. And um, there's an upcoming show that we've been working on 
but oh the flashback before that um before this semester we had the whole COVID situation happening in the spring semester and you know i was actually supposed to choreograph a piece i was choreographing a piece for the spring dance concert of this year and we were working with um Karen Charles from Threads Dance Company, and once again, just focusing on like a lot more of like modern and contemporary dancing. Um, but yeah, she was also there teaching us about like, oh, like this is how you build a strong choreography. Like this is how you really make your story come to life on stage. And so working with her was also really great. But unfortunately, with COVID, like that perform that show had to be stopped, and like our school went into quarantine and all that stuff. But this year. This semester, you know, we're doing a virtual performance with Darius Strong and with um, Robert. Um, and yeah, we're still in the process of like creating that and like um, exploring with how to like put dance on film, which is really interesting to me because I'm a film student. And so I think like the best of both worlds, dance and film coming together, like makes me really happy and excited to see where this would go. And, you know, I still have like a lot to learn, but um, I'm here trying to make connections, <laughs> and so we'll see where that goes. Mm, thank you. Mm -hmm. And we're going to turn over now to hear Lou's story. Hey, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yeah, so um, awesome stories, everyone. Uh, my name is Lou. Um, so everyone's stories intertwine in, in some way. Uh, like Ching and Shan said, I think that's a typical Hmong, Hmong boy story. Um, so that's kind of mine too. So um, I started in uh, fifth or sixth grade uh, back elementary school. I'll start with a friend named Keela. Uh, we I always went to Sheridan Elementary and how I got started with him is that my elementary gym teacher was actually a breaker. And so in the middle of class, he was just like, hey, you guys want to see something? I was like, we were like, yeah. And then he just went and spun his back like 20 times. And we were just like, wow. Um, I was like, wow, that looks cool. I want to do it. And me back then, I really so uh, low self-esteem. You know, I was a short moan boy. And then, you know, everybody's like super tall. And so I just felt like that might boost my self-esteem and get girls because, you know, it might be a way for me to feel better about myself. Um, so we started there. Uh, we were supposed to do a talent show uh, in elementary, but we kind of backed out because I think we were just so um, beginner and we were just kind of shy. Um, and so uh, we, after that, we transitioned to middle school and he went to Hazel Park and then I went to Battle Creek Middle School. And so from there, we met friends from, diff from our middle school. And so, um, I met some friends named like G and a couple others. And then he met a couple of friends like King and Vang. And so we were dancing and then we just kind of came together and made a crew called ABC Crew. And initially the crew was called Asian Breakdance Crew, pretty funny story. But then we changed it to Alpha Breakers Crew. And um, like, so, like Cheng said, like I saw Cheng, I think it was AIM the first time, AIM school. And so I was like intimidated by a lot of these dancers because we were just starting out and just seeing these dancers. I was like, wow, they're really good. And so um, I remember seeing Vang battled, I think Ching's crew member, Michael. And so that was really inspiring because they did a lot of stuff I wasn't able to do. Um, with middle school, you know, we did town shows, uh, Hmong boys back then, you know, the split bang here, I had that, the long bangs. Uh, I had uh, rubber bands on my pants and then got in trouble one time just walking past my math teacher's room and he just got me uh, lunch detention because I was wearing rubber bands on my pants and it was supposed to be called gang related back then. And also, um, yeah, we started from there and then um, transitioned to high school. A lot of us separated to even more different schools. And so I had friends that went to Central uh, some went to uh, Johnson, and then I went to Harding. And so I kept dancing from there, um, still with the same crew. And then, uh, like Cheng said, uh, Johnson practices. I always went there to go uh, practice power uh, on the mats because like Cheng said, you could just throw the body around and not get hurt as much. 
Um, so that was fun. Um, and then as high school started, as the started to get older, a lot of the friends in my crew started to fall off. So a lot of them had girlfriends and they just kind of focused their energy on their girlfriends. Some of them kind of went into uh, different habits like drugs, uh, different kind of things. And then, so I just kept on dancing and I'm just kind of glad that I was dancing because growing up, I was born in Thailand in Pana and then came here in 93 when I was a couple months old. And so a lot of my uncles and cousins were gang members. And then I was just fortunate that I actually found dancing. And so uh, that was kind of my outlet. Uh, and then when all my friends in high school or my old ABC crew kind of fell off, um, I was solo for a bit. And then I uh, was dancing with Jake Morris, so, uh, my crew now Optimistic. Uh, I joined in with Optimistic uh, after that. And Optimistic crew, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was like awesome because just connected because uh, I still wanted to battle. I still want to compete. And then going in with them, it was uh, just really, it kind of uh, lit a fire in me again because I was just so down that our friends that was growing up, you know, they weren't doing the same thing I was doing. But still to this day, at least, you know, they're still good friends of mine, uh, but just not dancing as much. Mm. And also in high school, if I remember, I think I, we did a dance school called Boombox back because uh, my friend G at Central, uh, he had a connection with the rec next to it. So we were dancing with Boombox for a bit. And then after that was optimistic. After that was optimistic. Um, transition from high school, uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I was initially going to go for dancing too, but I was like, I don't know, you know, because I have to do other kind of styles. Um, I was going to school full time and then I was going through a hard time with my certain situations. And then uh, I was doing full time school. I was working and I was trying to dance and it was a like, big struggle. Um, and also during that, I was teaching dance. And so look, so with that, I met Marianne, uh, Marianne, uh, I remember uh, getting reached out to to be kind of like an assistant to like these youth in the middle school for after school. And so they were kind of just breaking and I would just kind of oversee them. And then after that, I started getting get uh, offered a position to actually teach them. And I was only like 18 at the time. And then it's just crazy now seeing your students you know, wherever you go now, like they all, they all grown up. They're like 21 now, 22, 23. And then uh, that was just an interesting time of, for me because I was still young, but at the same time I was mentoring these 13 or 14 year olds and seeing kind of like similar experiences where they were experimenting with things and like trying to see where the path was going to go. Um, and so I was, being, trying to be the best mentor I can be because growing up uh, there was all, always things that was thrown at you you know like people doing drugs and doing other negative things and so just try to have them focus on what's important and being themselves and try to stay out of trouble um, and so with that uh, Marianne uh, she was like the after school uh, program co uh, coordinator I believe uh, she always talked to me about how we had like a center where I would teach dancing and they would do their, their uh, you know, be like a cultural center. And so we both, she always talked to me about that and we always had dreams. Um, and so uh, after that, I kind of felt, I kind of stopped teaching so much. I was teaching like four schools, four or five schools a week and then while working still. And so that was kind of draining on me. Uh, I didn't know what to do. I graduated with my two years from my generals and I just didn't know what to do. Um, and so I was just working nine to five, regular job. And then out of nowhere, I get a message from Marianne. Hey, you want, remember we talked about opening a center? And so I was like, yeah, you know, she was like, yeah, well, here's your chance. You know, what if you, well, you start your own uh, dance school. And so I was like, oh yeah, I might as well do it. Cause I was kind of tired of my life. And also um, with that too, like saw a lot of inspirations in the community, like Jake of House of Dance, so my crew member, 
you know, he started the first hip hop popping and locking breaking studio in Minnesota. And so that was inspiring. And before that too, um, traveling to places like Florida and seeing like these b-boy centers uh, that's uh, meant for breaking and hip hop, that was inspiring to see how, uh, see what uh, people could do in the community. Um, and so that opportunity got brought upon me and then I just kind of sacrificed uh, working my job to just kind of get thrown into doing business now, which is called CypherSide. So right now I'm running my dance school called CypherSide. Um, and with that, you know, just teaching youth, you know, youngest we've taught with four, with four or three actually. And it's just inspiring to teach all these kids because growing up, we never had these mentors. Like back then we would just be kind of self-taught and have like friends kind of help you here and there uh, teach. To, uh, helping you with certain moves, but never like a class. And now I just want to like provide these opportunities for these kids that we didn't have growing up because back then middle school, like we would travel, like I would ride bike to the wreck like every day, uh, walk. I remember, um, cause I remember we were limited on bikes. And so I, me being the smallest one, I would be sitting on the front of the bike and someone would be standing on the pegs in the back. And so it'd be three people on the bike. And so that was, that hurt my butt too, cause I was just sitting and it's like a 10 minute bike ride. And so that was a fun and, you know, memorable time, but now, you know, it's different. And I just remember also performing back then, you know, no car, we got dropped off to perform at Roseville and my house was in St. Paul and we didn't have a ride back and it was, I remember, I think it was cold too. And so my friend Chong, he, uh, I think he had his little blue Civic and we would, it was just limited space. And there was like at least like six of the six, seven of us. And so I was fortunate enough to be able to ride in his car. And uh, half of the others had to walk from Roseville back to St. Paul. And so seeing all this struggle kind of made who I am today because now we just, um, feel I just feel lucky sometimes that uh, we have um, we have certain things now, um, and so with that, uh, with the school just uh, mentoring and helping the younger generation, um, and not, you know, because back then too, like parents didn't support like what a lot of them, a lot of the speakers have said. Um, I remember. I would just be dancing. I come back home, I get yelled at. Uh, and then my parents would be like, what are you doing? You're going to go be in games or something? And I was like, I'm just going to go dancing. And then, you know, being one, remember one time getting locked out of the house too, because I was going out and practicing and just hanging out with my friends. Um, and then now, luckily, my parents are a bit more supportive. I remember now, um, now see, seeing how my parents react now, because uh, I remember winning my first competition and I remember battling against Minnesota Joe and Tiberius in top four. And Minnesota Joe was like, a, you know, I looked up to him and he was one of the, he's the best, one of the best. And so we went to a tiebreaker in the battle and then I won the tiebreaker against Minnesota Joe. And so I was just like, wow, like I was just so happy. And then winning, winning that jam after I won 50 bucks. And then just showing that to my parents, it just made me, I felt proud about it. And then now that we're doing more, I'm doing more performances uh, with the kids and myself, you know, I'm just kind of fortunate enough to have opportunities like performing for like Timberwolves, uh, lucky enough to perform for like Super Bowl, and then, you know, other kind of different performances. And also funny story with the Timberwolves, I actually, when I started, there was actually no auditions for the breaking team for the Timberwolves. And so I tried out for the hip hop team. And so I was doing all this hip hop choreo and I was, I'm stiff, I, I'm not a hip hop dancer. <laughs> and so I remember just doing the hip hop dance. And I was like, oh man, I, man, this is bad. I don't think I'm gonna get through. And then there was like the freestyle part. And luckily I was breaking and then the coach was like, hey, you should just join the breaking team, you're awesome. And so she messaged Los Boogie and seeing, you know, if I could join them and so luckily, uh, I joined in because I had to go to the hip hop team. Uh, and so not, I don't think anyone else has gone through what I went through, had to go uh, take the hip hop auditions and then transition to the breaking team. But now 
it's different because there's auditions for the breaking team now. And so uh, I'm just really lucky to have uh, supportive people and like inspirations like the other, all the other speakers in the room or I guess in the other room, not my room, but, um, and it's just, you know, uh, being able to see everyone grow is inspiring, especially the kids and even like artists now. A lot of people, I think a lot of people when they were growing, when a lot of people grow up and they're dancing, a lot of people sometimes feel pressure to make it like, oh, I have to make this a career or else I have to stop. And for me growing up, it was just a hobby, but then I came into a career and there are still people today that still dance for the love of it and still have other careers. You know, there's people that are doctors and they're still dancing and competing. And so I feel like the new generation now, you know, uh, sh uh, should take into consideration that you can still do this if you love it. So uh, like I said, there's probably a lot more that's intertwined with everyone. Like Sean, I remember seeing Sean battles and then Ching also, our friendly competitions, you know, like back in my head, it's like, you know, like I want to beat them, you know. And I'm, it's funny with my crew member Jake too, is that, I remember being so intimidated by Jake, you know, he's my crew member now, back then, I was just so intimidated um, by him because he's he was an aggressive dancer and I, I didn't really understand breaking like the balance at the time. And so now, uh, kind of, like, I'm lucky like those incidents happened too because it, can, it made who I am today. So I'm just really glad for everyone's stories and all these experiences. Oh my gosh, your stories are fantastic. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions and you've shared so much and there really is a lot of similarity of, of how um, kind of a balance between going with the flow, you know, you've got friends that are inviting you or you're, you know, you, you join a student group or you see something on TV, like there's, there's, a, there's that inspiration and at the same time, a lot of initiative that you've each taken to pursue dance and to find ways to see yourself in in dance because it, it isn't it is it is hard in our society you know our bodies are not very trusted in society so like how do you make a case for dance as a form as an art form and so I saw a lot of um, similarities around kind of those paths and, and forging new um, new paths and also um, kind of um, seeing yourself within a line of generations, right? Like having had inspirations ahead of you and recognizing already you have people behind you that are kind of following in your footsteps. Um, what are some things that you think are going to, I think we've heard a lot about what, what there is a difference and you've shown how, um, you can make a living or a partial living and have something you know, to complement. What are some things that um, you see happening for the generations behind you? Or what do you hope that is gonna be new for you now? And Lou, if you wanna add something, just wave your hands and I'll, I'll switch the mic. Um, so I, I think one of my biggest goals that I'm constantly fighting for is to hopefully make this a new norm, mm -hmm. especially for Hmong women. Um, when I was in this journey, a lot of, I see a lot of talented and put a lot of talented and women, women who are, who has so much potential to grow. And one thing that I always see is they stop because it's not the norm. And I really hope that the future holds where, especially for Hmong women, that this is a normal thing to do and exploring it to do. And I hope our younger generation carries, carry on. I always say for them to carry on our story, for them mm -hmm. to build their own story, mm -hmm. for them to build their own path. And I think that's one thing why I always preach so much about histories and techniques and trying to be versatile in your styles is because that will just only make you that much stronger as a dancer. So I really hope in the future our dancers, you know, 
I always fight for um, seeing more of your faces everywhere. And I hope that our dancers in the future, especially for Hmong women, um, there's just more of us. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see more of us, and it's a beautiful thing, and there's a growth. But then now I, I don't want it to stop. So it's like, you know, we started it. <laughs> That's great. Now let's keep on climbing and let's keep on growing. And I agree with, you know, the, the part of saying you don't have to make this a professional living. Mm -hmm. Like you can, but you don't have to. You can still do this and you can still, you know, go to school and work full time. And another thing, too, is I, I even push it further to, you know, because a lot of Hmong women, when you get married, the first thing they do is you have to stop. I'm, I'm married. I have a kid. And the first thing I once said is, you have to stop dancing at my wedding. And I laughed, and I thought it was so funny. And I was just, you know, I really hope that not only do they continue it, you know, when they're single, but continue it when they're married. Mm. Because I feel like that would just m break the norm and just make everything just, like, for us, just that much better. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, hey. I think because of like social media and how like we're just so exposed to so much information now and it's easy to like see things and find things. And I feel like it, it's for next generation, even our generation, to have clear choices, clear supported choices. Mm. Um, so then we can continue to find ourselves and yeah. to realize that, you know, you can do things if you're in a very specific, in a, in a unique position. Because of course, I'm married to Nancy, we have a kid together. I'm a stay-at-home dad. I don't have a full-time job, but I do dance on the side because uh, you know, me and Nancy, we're not, dance isn't our career, but we treat it as if it's um, a passion, as if it is a profession, mm -hmm. but it's not our career. It really isn't, but we just do it because it does more for us, um, not career-wise, but more mental, emotional, um, physical, mm -hmm. to learn more about our bodies. Um, and it's just kind of like, if you kind of take a step back and not look at it from a dance lens, like any lens that you do, whether if you're a cameraman, uh, whether if you're a screenwriter, what if you're or a, like a, a factory worker, anything that you can learn that you can do, it's, it's a very general concept. And, and I hope um, everyone in our generations and the next generations have those choices and can see that it's, it's somewhat the same, the concept of just trying, of going for it, of committing, of doing, but it's just a different, path, a different mm -hmm. category, a different genre, um, but it's very much the same of growing and building and being part of community mm -hmm. and bettering your skill set and becoming just a better human being. So yeah. it's Beautiful. clear choices to be a better human being. Mm. <laughs> um, I guess for me, um, because there's so, like what Sean said, there's a lot of information out there and in terms of dance, there's a ton of styles. Um, so really dabbling, you, I'm, for me, dabbling is okay for me because then, you're, especially if you're first starting, you're still trying to figure out what you actually want to do. Um, but especially like being patient mm. and with, yes, social media, everything's like, Videos are like 15 seconds, 15 seconds more, you're bored, you're scrolling to the next thing. Um, so kind of being patient, taking your time to actually figure out what it is that you really want to do. Um, and for me, I jumped right into popping. So now I've actually given the opportunity to try like whacking, to try like a little bit of choreography. Um, and so I guess there is no proper way to do things mm -hmm. either. So like figure out how you, how you want to learn and like how you kind of want to go into things. Mm. So where's that? Yeah, I'll probably just say that, you know, I agree with everyone. And I think what everyone sees is I think being that we are our own leaders and then we are a group of leaders in, in, mm. a, in a space together that we're speaking um, from the same, I guess, perspective for the most part. And I don't see any disagreement. And mm -hmm. I think that it, everything is well said and well, well put together. And anything I'll, I'll have to add on to is just probably just, you know, not letting thing get, things or the history or uh, the struggle get washed away. And then 
the future uh, community and the youth and the, from here to the next, you know, or maybe hopefully 100 plus years, right? It's like, hopefully it doesn't get washed away and unforgetted and have no means and have no drive. Like, mm -hmm. yes, they will now have the resources more than we did when we first started. Um, and we now have more resources than the people that before us started, yeah. you know, and so it's just constant more stack of resources and everything just keeps stacking up. But then mm -hmm. just because you're reading from the top page doesn't mean you forget about the bottom page. And so I guess that's my only thing I'll add on to that. And so the future doesn't forget about mm -hmm. our struggles and our generations for us the struggles. And so we all stay in the same drive yeah. and reasons in a way, yeah. Um, I guess I'll speak about it from like the perspective of the younger generation. <laughs> like I'm very thankful that like there's like so many um, long role models now available to us that like we can look up to and like learn from, of course. And I want to echo what you said about like having dance become like a norm instead of it being unaccessible to like not just Hmong dancers, but Hmong woman dancers. And also I think going forward, I just want to see like Hmong dancers take up more space and like really, um, cause I see a lot of Hmong dancers within like the urban and hip hop realm, but I want to see like more Hmong dancers take up the space and like something that's contemporary or modern, or, like not like, not like just continue to take up more spaces in different parts of different dances. Mm. And we'll turn it over to Lou. Yeah, so I'm really glad, like, uh, you guys are talking about that, about this topic. Like, I'm glad to see people setting a new trend, uh, like Nancy, you know, like, um, seeing more females in the dance community because there is not as much female dance community or female dancers in the community as much as male dancers. Uh, especially, you know, we I would like to see a more trend in the b boy b girl community, having more females in the scene because like you guys said uh, it teaches patience uh it's like in breaking you're learning a move you know it's going to take dedication and hard work it's like you're going to college and you're just kind of not putting in all the work uh dancing applies to kind of all different kind of life lessons and life circumstances uh, you know like building confidence like from like from my personal experience you know i was a shy shy mom boy i didn't talk didn't really i was scared to talk to people i was scared to talk to girls you know, and I think the way I'm now because breaking kind of helped build up my confidence and I wouldn't be able to be where I am today here speaking to and on this discussion if it wasn't for the dance. Uh, and also now I see that the new generation of parents are seeing the benefits of dancing uh, because like I said, our parents before they just saw it like, oh, you're, you're just rolling on the ground. You know, you're not, you're not doing anything to help yourself. You know, you should just stop. You need to get married. Like right now, my mom's still telling me you need to get married, you're getting old, you know? Um, and so, um, uh, yes, I think seeing now like parents that we teach, you know, with all with uh, all the people just, that's in the discussion right now, we see that uh, there's a lot of the youth now, parents that see the benefit and like experience I had with uh, like Ching, uh, Ching and I teach, uh, you know, a breaking class at my school, uh, our student Nolan, right? He came he was like five six years old and he was a shy kid and you know he came late to class one day and he he was crying because he was just he was so shy he didn't have the confidence and then now you see him on the floor he's just like dancing and spinning on his head and freezing like no tomorrow and then it just makes me jump and when i see that it inspires me and i you know parents say uh to me all the time you know like uh, we appreciate you know what you do because now those kids, uh, they're building up their their own self a lot faster than what we would have had if we would have had mentors back then too. So um, I appreciate that these new parents and families now are seeing that dancing, any kind of dancing, ben, you know, it's not just dancing just to look cool. It builds you know, uh, lifelong uh, benefits, you know, confidence, patience, and facing your fears too like when i battle like i think the dance floor as if like it's like a fear or a challenge and then when it's just me and the opponent i'm just like i'm gonna stare you down and then i'm gonna like mess you up i'm gonna i'm gonna like smoke you and i'm gonna beat you and so no matter how 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 famous or how how um how good the other guy is you know it's just about doing your best and that's just for anything in life you know, doing your best and trying hard
Well, I thank you all. This has been such a rich conversation and just being so open to sharing the struggles, like you said, and also the inspirations, the points where that has given you the boost to just keep going. Even if there's a break in, in where dance was in your lives, you, you picked it up and those stories are really meaningful. And uh, I just wanna thank you. Thank everybody for coming and joining us today on Facebook and uh, being part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.